I am Jim W6LG or YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California, where again it's going to be 112 degrees. I think it's above 100 already and it's 1130 this morning in the morning. Um, sometimes we build things that uh, we want to add to our station. Sometimes it's cheaper to build it than it is to buy it. Could be that building that device is a way of learning how to do things. Um, I recently built something that I, I didn't see online and I had all the parts on hand. And I was curious about what was the insertion loss? How bad was the insertion loss? So I decided to measure it and uh, the device I built was this. Um, this is a box with a switch on the front and a sideways on purpose. <laughs> it, it wouldn't fit horizontally. Uh, it would fit only horizontally, it wouldn't fit vertically, but that's okay. I'll explain why. And on the back, I color-coded some uh, SO239s um, input, and uh, these are to uh, a device. So, now the inside is, at best, maybe not the best wiring in the world. And here was my concern. I had to drag some wires back and forth on the inside and on the um, uh, the voltage for the relay, I put in a small choke because I wanted to stop RF from um, leaving the box and going down the the, uh, the wires that lead to a, um, a power supply. My thought was that that would radiate RF. So I put in an RF choke and I put in a 0.01 capacitor from the positive side to ground. Now on the back, um, hardly noticeable, is a little phono jack, an RCA phono jack. And you know why it's called an RCA phono jack? This guy right here. Why is that called, and why is the opposite thing, and I don't have one in front of me, called a phono plug? If you're really old, you might know, but um, some of the 19, late, uh, probably not late 1930s, 1940s, certainly during World War II, the phonographs that played 45 RPM records had a big spindle in the middle and you'd stack your records up on it. And how did you play that? Because it didn't have an amplifier and it was a sort of a black box, you'd set your records in it, turn it on and away you go. Well, what you did is you took a cable from that RCA phonograph and you plugged it into the back of your AM radio, your RCA radio. So it was an RCA phono plug and an RCA phono jack. When you plugged it into the back of your radio, you hit a switch on your AM radio and you had music that came out of the phonograph. Because the phonograph is basically just a motor and a an arm, if you will. And so that's where the RCA phono plug and jack came from. And it stayed. So anyway, <laughs> so like, who cares, right? So I put one on here and that's that's my uh, voltage to the, uh, to the relay coil. But here's the question. And let me describe what it is. Uh, the box is uh, simply a box I had. It's, I've used it for umpteen different projects had holes drilled in it. Um, it's pretty much RF type. I always, I don't throw much away. So I went through the box full of relays and found a relay that had, um, I think it's 20 amp contacts. Now, this box is going to decide which of two amplifiers gets the power from the transceiver or transceivers. Now it could be a box that selects transceivers. Now, I could have done it with two mechanical switches, and that would have worked just fine. But this would be amplifier on one side and the amplifier on the other side. So it's going to sit up on top, and I can flip the switch and pick one amp or the other. Amplifier, uh, let's say the amplifier does 1,500. The formula for power last time I checked was P equals I squared R the power equals the current squared times the resistance. In this case, we're really talking about peaks. And that's crucial to understand that we gotta, 
we got to hedge our bet just a bit on that. So let's say the contacts say they're good for, let's say 10 amps. In fact, there was a commercial uh, antenna switch I had from a well-known company. And it was to be mounted outside, and after a year or two, it failed. And I called the manufacturer on the phone, and I said, hey, what the heck? These relay contacts, they're, they're 10 amps. And he said, well, I squared R, Jim. Uh, I squared 10 amp times 10 times 10 is 100 times 50 ohms is um, 5,000 watts. What's the problem? Uh, it's not the switch failure or the uh, contact failure. Well, the heck it wasn't. Relay contacts and other things that are rated at 12 volts or 60 hertz are very much derated when you get to 30 megahertz. That is to say that 60 cycles per second is not equal to 30 million cycles per second. How much do you derate it? Well, you could just divide it in half. That would be the easiest way. A lot of manufacturers seem to use a formula that's in the ballpark. And I don't know if they've tested it or if there's some other criteria. I simply don't know. But 40% derating. So let's apply that. And where's the problem, right? So if it's if it's 5,000 watts and we're derating it by 60%, that's 3,000 watts. Still huge headroom. Doesn't work that way. Remember, it's I squared R. So if the contacts are rated at 10 amps and we derate them to 6 amps, it's 6 squared, which is 36, I have to think for a second, times 50, which would be 1800 watts. Not much headroom there, and what can happen is you have something with a higher SWR. Maybe the current is uh, not exactly what you think it is because the impedance is different, and those contacts get fried. And that's what happened to me. The board on the inside fried, the relay got hot, it fried, it fried the board, I had to cut out the board and uh, run uh, discrete wires as opposed to the traces, which were gone. So, what does that have to do with this? Well, these are plenty big. They're like 20 amp contacts at uh, 60 hertz. So if we figure there, oh, I haven't done the math. So if we figure there, let's say we, we derate them by uh, 50%, because that's easy math for me, that's still 5,000 watts. So this will work fine. And again, um, a simple switch here to uh, choose one of the two relays. And again, I had to mount it sideways because there just was no room in the box. Is this gonna work? I think it will. Um, now, what's what's the next question you might have if you're building something like that? It could be a homemade antenna switch, which is kind of next on my list of things to, to play with. Um, what is the loss of having this thing in the circuit? Is it a lot? Is it? A DB. Uh, my wiring's pretty flaky. Maybe it's a, a bunch. It's not. Reason being is that um, this thing is going to switch amplifiers uh, at 10 meters. The wavelength would be about 33 feet or so, right? So a half, a quarter wavelength is eight feet. Half wavelength on like on a Yagi would be 16 feet and a full wavelength would be 32, 33 feet. So the, the wires on the inside are really short. So let's measure that, and let's figure out a way to measure the loss, the insertion loss of that box in my circuit, because I don't want to give up any decibels anywhere. So let's do that with a nano VNA, and how should we do that? I think the easiest way is to, I've got uh, two lengths of car. Um, I really wanted to use two, uh, two of the black ones, but so here's um, uh, 50 feet and 25 feet, and here's a coupling in the middle, a bulkhead, and I'm going to measure the loss over the total length of this thing, and then I'm going to take this out and put the box in place of it and measure the loss again, and I can do that at a couple different frequencies. Um, I don't expect a perfect answer. I just want to know if it's a huge difference. So let's do that. Let's first, and it's going to be big, 
measure the loss of this RG8X. I picked it because um, it's easy for me to work with in this test. It also has a bunch of loss. There's going to be how much loss? Well, you might be surprised. So let's measure that. So I'm going to hook this up. I'll put it up on the screen and we'll measure the loss. Put the box in the circuit, take this bulkhead out, and then measure the loss again and see what it looks like and see if there's a, a big difference. Is this perfect? No, but it'll give me a measure as to whether or not it's bunches or just a little. What's a little? I don't even want it to be a dB. I want it to be a fraction of a dB, half a dB. No, I don't even want it to be that. Quarter of a dB. I don't even want it to be that. I want it to be just as little as I can get it to be. Um, because on receive, I don't want to lose any signal. I really don't. All right, I'm going to stop the recorder and then I'll hook this stuff up. I'll bring up um, one of the programs that I can use um, and display it on the screen, um, SDR Sharp or SDR Quick, one of those things, and we'll, we'll go from there. So stand by. All right, the coax is connected. Let's uh, sweep. There's the line. Set that as a reference and I'm going to put the um, the box in the circuit now. So I'm remo I am removing the bulkhead connector. It looks like the. Um, the loss is, um, no, I can't read it, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, so about uh, about 3 dB going both ways, so um, somewhere in the order of a dB and a half. Okay, both connectors are on, covers on the box. The switch is in the right position, there's no power to it. And let's sweep this thing again. Oh, here it goes, sweep. <laughs> Alright, so there's uh, virtually no difference between having my box in the circuit and not. I mean, those two lines pretty much line up exactly the same so um, let's see these numbers look the same there, there may be a tenth of a DB difference the answer is there's virtually zero insertion loss so I, I don't have to worry about it and that looks to be a reasonably good test of, uh, of what I built okay so my um, little switch box has virtually no insertion loss. It's not enough to worry about and probably equals that of some commercial devices. If you haven't subscribed please do that. If you'd like to make a donation there's a spot on the screen somewhere to do that. Not sure where. There maybe. And um, I appreciate everything that everybody has done. I'm Jim W6LG in Rockland, California. It's now well over 100 pushing 110 and uh, they're saying rolling power outages later today set later today uh, like four o'clock between four and nine o'clock when it's the hottest they're gonna have to shut off the power to parts of California because there's not enough to go around and for those who um, we'll discuss that another time but for those who depend on electricity to survive, it's a very scary thing. 73.